I, I'm a visual person, and it helps me to understand things uh, through, through either a diagram or an illustration. And what I, what I want to say um, is is very general. This isn't even attempting to be a complete uh, uh, explanation or discourse on what happens in an automobile accident, but this would help me if I were involved in an accident, and this was my first experience with this, uh, and I, I'll try to kind of speak as if I was talking to my wife, because my wife's not even sure who's our insurance company. So a lot of people don't even know, they know they have to have insurance, but what happens if you're involved in an accident? Well, the first thing you have to know is that we live in uh, the beautiful state of Florida, but Florida is a no-fault insurance state. What does that mean? It means it, it makes absolutely no difference who's at fault. Your own insurance company is the primary payor. They're the first insurance company that has to do something. I mean. If you were stopped at a red light and someone rear-ended you, you would initially think, well, their insurance company's got to start doing something for me. That's not the law. It's your own insurance company. Regardless of who's at fault, your insurance company is the first person you talk to. And it, it helps me to put a T-square up here. Now let's put over here you and your insurance company. What are they supposed to do for you? Well, you've paid them a premium. They make their money by taking your, pre your premium and putting it in their bank account. And some insurance companies are not so willing to say, oh, thank you so much for your premium. This is what the law says I'm supposed to do for you. Uh, we get involved in a lot of what we call first party lawsuits because an individual's own insurance company is not doing what they should. But some things that they would do is that they are supposed to pay for your medical bills and depending on your policy, how much they pay. And by the way, you can decide who you go to. It's an interesting little pity. Uh, uh, the, the insurance company doesn't tell you uh, where you're supposed to go. You initially can decide uh, who you want for medical care. If you're unable to work because of your accident, an injury, the doctor confirms that. They've got to pay you lost wages. There's a percentage, uh, but you don't get a full paycheck, but you paid a premium, and if you can't work, you ought to be able to get that from your insurance company. There are other benefits. they got to pay you mileage to your doctor. Some insurance companies won't tell you all those things, thus you know, that's what we're supposed to do uh, in, in helping you through this. Well, you, you have uh, these benefits up to certain amounts, but when do you get to collect from the person who actually caused the accident? Let's, let's say over here, this is the dividing line. Now let's just say this represents the defendant or the party who is at fault. You would hope in our state that they have insurance or some kind of financial ability to help you. That's a tricky thing because in Florida, and Florida is in a minority, you don't have to have liability coverage to drive your car. When you go register your car or get your license, you have to show proof of insurance, but you got to show proof of PIP coverage, not liability. And I expect that it, there's a huge percentage, 35 maybe even more than that, 40% of people are driving around out here with this coverage, which protects them, but they don't have the kind of insurance to protect you in case they hit you and it was their fault. Now, Florida does provide you an opportunity to have over here what we'll call uninsured or underinsured motorist coverage. You can go to your insurance company and say, I don't want to take a chance. If I'm hit by somebody who was at fault and has no insurance, I want to protect myself. The premiums for this are cheap. If there is a little bit of advice, that I hope you'll remember this, if you don't have uninsured or underinsured motorist coverage, call your agent. 
and, and get this coverage for you. We have lots of people that come to us and they weren't at fault, but the person at fault has no insurance and they have not gotten this. Well, let's assume that you have an injury, a legitimate injury, you're getting medical care. When do you get to collect from this insurance company? You gotta cross this line. You gotta get over here. If you can't get across this line, you get nothing. What does it take to get across this line? Well, some of the obvious ones are death. If, if you die as a result of an accident, you are, you've automatically crossed what we call the tort threshold, and you have a chance, depending on who's at fault and lots of other factors, to collect from this insurance. Another possible way to cross this line is if you have scarring. If there's some visible scarring as a result of the injury, obviously you'd have it if there was surgery, but if you had scarring without a surgery, you possibly have an opportunity to cross this line and get to this. The other, and this is where most of these cases that are tried, are do you have a, we'll just abbreviate this as permanent impairment. What is a permanent impairment? I can't give you a permanent impairment. A medical provider, it can be a chiropractor, it can be an orthopedic, neuro, any, any doctor, they have to conclude that in their opinion and within reasonable medical certainty and probability, these are the kind of standards they have to say, you have some kind of permanent limitation, some permanent impairment as a result of the accident. If they're willing to make that statement, then you have an opportunity to cross this line and possibly obtain some of this money if there is any. Now, that's kind of in a horribly rudimentary nutshell, some facts that will at least help you understand what, how, the, how, this, how this works. There are exceptions to it. One exception would be if, if they have no insurance and you've got to go to your uninsured motorist coverage, your own care does not want to get rid, does not really want to pay you because that takes away from the premiums they've collected. So sometimes you're a little bit of an odd with your own insurance company because they're wanting to save their premium dollars. Again, another reason why you need to have uh, an attorney, at least in my opinion, you ought to have an attorney who is experienced, who, who's done these thousands of times, uh, or certainly capable, that has an ability to, to, to butt heads if necessary uh, with the insurance company, to try the case if it's necessary and have the skill to do that in the courtroom. Uh, this might be the only case you'll ever have. You need a lawyer, so just Make sure that you've got somebody who's, uh, who knows what they're doing. It, it isn't complicated. It, 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 it sounds a little bit that way, but uh, if, you've, if you've got an attorney you're comfortable with and, and he's doing what he should and there are a lot of good lawyers like that, um, you'll, you'll be in good shape. But don't be worried about how it works and who pays what. Uh, this might help you a little bit. and We would certainly invite uh, you or anyone to come to our office and meet us and we're happy to sit down and give you more detail about it.